classic example, Ganja Farmer. Uh-huh. Right? Let's hear about Ganja Farmer. Ganja Farmer is, Jaron Woodruff brought this young, quiet guy to me, Marlon Asher. See, be for this, have this young fella here, you know, from the hood, and you have something happening with this song here. I mean, I heard it, and I heard the potential, something in it kind of, yeah, yeah, it could work as a producer. Um, we did it. Actually, I was one of the last productions I was working out of. Remember Shell Shock's room in, at Sun Basin? What we mm-hmm. call Shell Shock's room, the, mm-hmm. the purple room upstairs. And that's one of the last productions I did on my rig inside there. Um, when I was mixing that, I had played it for uh, two of the top radio station program, uh, program directors were inside there at the time. And yeah, be very nice, but once you hear that, but you know you're not getting any airplay, right? Um, so eventually we got a little marketed. I mean, and it came back as a hit. I mean, I don't go through the whole story there. But what a lot of people did. Now go through the story. We have time. <laughs> All right. Um, after after I'd mixed in, I realized it wasn't going to happen here because the policy of radio stations at the time were they will play any reggae from Jamaica or London, but they will not play local reggae, right? Because you had guys like Surf, we used to be around Song Rev, and then those guys were quietly always doing a little reggae in little home studios and stuff, you know, trying things in their band room, but lo- local radio would refuse to play it. So realizing that, what what we decided to do was guerrilla market the song. And after, I was just um, duplicating CDs, you know, the normal $5 and $10 CDs by hand, and just handing it out to Maxi Taxis and Taxis. Then Jaron gave it to the pirates below KFC, you know, the, the network. Um, in other words, we use who are fighting us, the pirates, to our advantage with guerrilla marketing. So radio stations were hadn't got a clue this was happening. And we also sent it outside, and it really broke in New York. All right? Tell us how that happened. Uh, huh? How did it break in New York? How What caused it oh. to break in New York? No, we sent it up there. I mean, and it's marketing. <laughs> break when you mean break in your break on the Caribbean market or break on the on the radio station out there. Okay. Yeah, it it, it wasn't in the, like a, we forced in the party because Marlon was in touring yet, right? It was I think it was Hot ninety seven. One of the main stations, right? Mm-hmm. The station started one or two of the hot stations because of connection. A couple of DJs, you know, played it, and it just caught on like wildfire outside there. No special yeah. marketing, no money passing, no nothing, just... No, 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 no. All right. All right. So, all right. Uh, so, it just, I mean, how you get it into the hands of these DJs then? I mean... The CDM, my friend. That was, you have to understand, this is before the internet, eh? <laughs> Okay, yeah, right. no, I understand. Right. So, it's send up a CD, send up a CD, FedEx up a CD, special mail, a couple CDs here and then stuff like that. Um, no, but way. but you, you you got it in the hands of somebody who knew the DJs personally to give it to them. Yeah, yeah. Di- well, yeah. I'm just trying to see what the mechanics yeah, is it, of the the. It had, the, the, it had to be personal connection. So in other words, you can't you couldn't just stay here and you know send it to somebody. Look at it on the flip side. Somebody out there who has some kind of power <laughs> on, uh, in the industry get a CD from somebody in the part of the world. He will have his assistant listen to it and, you know, kind of brush it off. You know, um, you have to know. It's who you know, who knows you kind of situation still. It's part, like part of the marketing thing and managerial thing, you know. Uh, and because of that success, we have, we have a network globally that is, um, we can pick up the phone and call certain people on the planet in the industry. Right, so then how come we we uh, have nothing so called big yet? No, because in other words, all right. If all right, for instance, if I had to pick up, if I have to pick up the phone and put it in the hands of a certain person, like for instance, I have a friend who said, I mean, he's huge in industry. He said, Beaver, I will help you. However, all I ever want is North America. You can deal with the rest of the world, and you know, whoever. Um. You don't walk into those doors every day, open and close like that. In other words, you have to have, make sure you have a, a product that is good enough that when you get that one chance or that one or two chances, you know, you don't embarrass yourself. 
you know, or you don't want to be turned away and kept turned away next week, eventually they'll start to ignore you, right? Um, so our production values have to go up. All right, let me, um, let me ask you your business, if I could. Um, like, mm -hmm. how much pieces of, like, ganja farmer would have sold? Oh, yeah, I lost track of the numbers, I mean. Well, we yeah, the, ballpark, no, ballpark. No, we were the only people, we were the only people, as a matter of fact, I had to get back them numbers from Gerald. Because we had a pressing plant open for a year just doing that in, in New York, doing vinyl, right? Oh, vinyl. Ganja Farmer went on vinyl on, on a label in, in, in Jewish writing, in, I think, Japanese. Um, but the success of Ganja Farmer was helped because it was on vinyl. And that it kept that authentic vinyl sound for when, I guess, that kind of... Um, Caribbean urban sound happened. You remember the year it was? What, what? The year? Huh? The year Ganja Pharma came out. Uh, that must have been, I think, about 2000 and when, boy, 15, 2004, 5, somewhere around there. I can't remember. I just lost track of time. Um, but, the, uh, the, all right, let me, I have said it already. So, the trick in Ganja Pharma is this. Ganja Pharma in reality is a soca. Forget Marlon Ashley Top. Ganja Farmer is a soca piece of music at 80 BPM. Oh. And that was the secret in Ganja Farmer. You understand me there? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I have no, a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay, so I was... Do you, do you think with, with the music now... It's too tight. I mean, too many lyrics. I know long time when you all used to produce mu music, you would have a lot of instrumental pieces coming in between the songs. Right. Do you feel that the production now lack is just vocals and it, it lack that little instrumental piece in the songs? What do you think about that? You're quite right. I mean, you're asking me answers. Um, and I think that was the, that was the part of the problem with... Um, with today's soca music. Um, mm -hmm. Not that you can't do it, but you can't have all your tracks doing it, <laughs> you know? Um, because, and the argument is, well, the artists are working to win either Road March or Soka Monarch or Chutney Soka Monarch. So this is the formula. And you have five judges with criteria, so you're producing your whole career to suit those five judges with the criteria of a sheet in front of them, right? Um, look at uh, all the other music in the world. So, and, so your creativity is being stifled at the suit yeah, yeah. this particular oh, thing? Big, time. big, 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 big time. Um, again, I'm not saying don't do, I mean, that is festival music. That is what carnival, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is too much of the market is concentrated on the festival. Well, is the only thing that really making so-called big money? You know? yeah, because they, because they're pigeonholed into that. In other words, if you were doing it out, all right, when I started doing jazz on the beach in Tobago, mm -hmm. people tell me that would never work. In other words, you have to step outside your comfort zone. You know, you can't say this is the only thing they're making money. That was not making money like that before. In other words, Calypsonians were making money before. So how come Calypsonians are not making money today like they use? Times have changed, but you have to open the market. You know, and again, for instance, we are the only culture I know on the planet that, for instance, you have Soka now, they will tell you Calypso dead, right? And Kai so dead. And then you have Calypsonians telling you, you're not a Calypsonian unless you write your own song. And in other words, there's so much variety in us here. You know, let's let people be, just let us be, you know, so they have a Kaisonian, then you have a Calypsonian, then you have a songwriter, then you have a Calypso writer, then you have a Calypso artist, then you have a Soka artist. In other words, let everybody be. Uh, Mario, you know, I mean, in the 70s, the, the variety of music was from pop, rock, I mean, mm -hmm. everything. We used to have a lime on, on Sunday evenings in a place called Purple Haze, for instance, as a musician. Um, where is now Shops of Marava, like next to Backshot? a place called Purple Haze, where yeah. musicians used to go and just jam. In other words, from about 2 o'clock Sunday 
till about midnight Sunday night. It was a, any musician could have walked inside there and just jam. It is simple as that. Um, there's no need for that now because soca is has just become very narrow, you know, narrow bridge kind of situation. Um, but we, we have to release ourselves, man. You know, don't 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 tighten up. You know, and a lot of this is starting to show. All right, let's let's talk about just briefly, Juve. All right, mm -hmm. we got uh, our knickers in a twist about Juve. I mean, come now, man. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, from the time somebody wants to do that, we're supposed to have jumped on the bandwagon and run with it. Um, the same way, like, uh, um, if you know the history, Robin. Um, we aim to taste the rum, boy. We aim to taste it. <laughs> oh, Lord. We aim to taste the rum. But yeah. let, let's go back a little further, mm -hmm. uh, which most people don't know. Ralph McDonald did just the two of us. Remember Bill Wither? Just the two of us, right? He wrote that for Trinidad and Tobago. Right? Well, um, he, there, there was a, a, a poster. There was a poster. There was a poster, a tourism poster. Mm -hmm. um, just Mark, um, Trinidad and Tobago, just the two of us. And just I think he saw that and he that inspired him to write the song. And right. Because when the song became a hit, he told Trinidad, the tourism people here, that you all could use that for anything you want for free, right? And we never really take it up. I mean, that's the story I got, right? And I, no, and no, Ralph the, told me, oh, kind of told oh, me oh, that oh, himself. Oh, you'll be nice. The response was, thank you, but no thank you. We have a campaign already. Right? Well, I think they probably just didn't know what to do with it. You know, it was... I don't know. Do we, do we still know? Do we as yet know what to do with, with who we are? I suppose we know a little better now. Right. I suppose. No, because at the end of the day, she said, yeah, thank you, but no thank you. I'll, I'll take it back, put his tail between the leg, and got a deal from Wrigley's string gum for double mint, and just the two of us and won a Grammy after that. All right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, things like that, you know, we have to be a little more flexible with who we are, man, you know? Um, and step out, um, step out outside the little narrow corridor of winning a road match, Soka Monarch or Chutney Soka Monarch. Um, because that routine is you, you do that or you're high up, a foreign promoter will notice you. Then you have gigs in Washington and New York and Atlanta and Miami. And, very real, you know. very real. I mean, I mean, I, I, I know. Men build big house all over the world and all kind of thing off of that. So we can't really knock it. But I mean, if, if there was something else though, um, you know, I mean, the marketing thing is a real thing too because even the traditional Calypso, if you find the proper, um, what do you call it, the, the proper agents who just do like folk music and that kind of thing, you could get into some places with that. But I think we just do... Somehow we are tap into the real, um, you know, the real market things yet, you know, and we still haven't begun to work together yet. What I mean by together is that the the the, the academia people who could who could write proposals and stuff, and the, the 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 financial people. And all right, for instance, I when I had my studio and I I would go to a bank. And I would talk to somebody and thing, and you know, I remember a bank person telling me once, um, you know, you all must learn how to market yourself better. And I would say, well, here what? I okay, well, let me sit down here and you come in the studio and mix the album. You know, like we never had a um a real synergy of all the forces, you know. Mm -hmm. No, but um, you know, all that is well and good. Um. To me, the whole thing is come out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. I, Beaver, I quite agree with you because um, the music is 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 everybody running down the same thing, and nobody yeah. trying to do anything different. I mean, I look at the season name start for twenty twenty two, and we have about over 30, 40 rhythms coming out, and artists just jumping on rhythms and singing a song, and nobody trying to do. A production that is different, um, something that that where there's creativity, 
you know, it's, it's everybody just running down the carnival, as you see. And um, it's it's kind of, for, I personally, I find it, it, it just gets kind of boring for me, you know, because it's like another rhythm, five people on it. And mm -hmm. but but there's more to music than just the rhythm and and being a DJ, I I look forward to hearing other aspects of of creativity than just people coming on a rhythm or singing a song. As I said, when I look back at your productions, and I mean I want you to tell me about White White Horse too because that's a major production. Um, there was music in it that you could enjoy, and um. It could last, you know, um, and it wasn't geared only for carnival. And there seemed to be, we, we lacking a lot of creativity in the music going forward. And guys are just looking to sing a song for a soca party and that is it. You know, and as a, you know, but I long to see more creativity then. But actually you hit, you hit it right on the head there. Mm -hmm. It's not even just about carnival, you know, it is about the carnival mm -hmm. fit actually, mm -hmm. because we, even within Carnival, there's so much. Um, there's Calypso, there are different, you know, styles and things of Calypso. Some of them we have kind of shoved or killed or thrown in a corner. Um, you know, it's all about, you see, getting a venue, getting 10,000 people inside there, dogs and security by the gate, nice stage, nice PA, a good DJ, maybe once in a while, ban and 10,000 drunk people and get them into a frenzy, you know. But there is more to that, you know. It doesn't have to be. And actually, under this pandemic, it's starting to show some of them that you have to step outside that thing. Because now, especially online, with online entertainment, you are now interacting with people who are at home, who are in their bedrooms, in their living rooms, in their TV rooms, and most are very sober people. They're not drunk like they in army fed, you know? So you have to produce music for people who are also sober, right? Because I always keep saying there, there, there are three things that drive the music industry and always been. Chemical, alcohol, and weed, right? And soca music drives the hardest end of the alcohol spectrum. Right, like EDM will drive chemical and stuff like that, um, but we drive the hard alcohol, the punch and the white oak, you know, in the hot sun, no chaser, you know. Um, because I started doing surveys years ago, and started to realize when you ask people um, if they had, if they enjoyed this fet or they enjoyed that fet, the answer is yes or no, and a lot of times the yes is because they were drinking, the no is because nah. The, the bar wasn't too hot. They didn't have, you know what I mean? It, it goes hand in hand. I'm not knocking it. It is what it is. But step outside that space too, you know? And, um, all right, Mario, you remember the show Cool in the Gang, Eddie Savannah? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That was the first, that show broke a barrier that year. Because I remember with John, I woke with John on the PA system at the time. That show broke a barrier. That was the first show that they had soca artists. I mean, main soca soca artists out of carnival performing like that, right? Cool and the Gang was the headliner. But in that show, I can't remember all the artists. They had Nelson, Super, Duke, Chalk Dust. I mean, spectacular. In other words, they broke that wall down, right? And this was, what, right after Easter, something like that, or Glorious Saturday. You know, the first night you could have something after Easter. Shadow right. was the man who really did break that. They used to bring Shadow on shows all through the year, and he used to mash up. No, no, but I'm talking about, no, but this concert, this mm -hmm. concert was the kind of flagship concert that you know, would signify that the industry has changed, right? No, Shadow is a whole, we could do a whole two hours with Shadow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because As they Shadow, say, two hours, we going on for a little while and, you know, the, you know right now we're in a state of curfew. Um, so um, so we should wrap up in a while, but all right. So as we reach here now, Beaver, your expertise, what is the way forward? We're moving forward. You tell us the way forward. Diversify. In other words, stop hiding who you are naturally, number one. Um, 
do not try to define yourself as only um, a soca artist or an African artist or an Indian artist or this. Uh, you are creative people. We are in a, uh, a melting pot, a creative melting pot. Um, why is Trinidad, for instance, the biggest reggae market? Why Byron Lee used to come here every year? In other words, Byron Lee would tell you, for instance, that his rest of the year will not be successful unless he came here for carnival. There's a reason for that. We have a source of creativity, um, but we are denying ourselves a bulk of it. Simple as that. We have to expand into different subgenres of soca. Go back and start in. No, I'm hearing people are producing pop and other stuff, but it's not hitting the airwaves. It's not, in other words, it's not marketed, right? So there's pop music, there's rock music. Uh, remember, it's joint pop or in sky. I mean, even after the days of Last Supper and stuff like that, right? Even like with Fire Flight, during the heyday of Fire Flight, Carnival Week, I will drop a cool in the gang and flatten a party with it. One who went on fire or something like and flatten the party with it, right? Um, guys are afraid to step out of their comfort zone. That comfort zone is very much like a sing, get popular, get run up the islands, Atlanta, Miami run. But the runs them guys are doing, we were doing that rim run 30 years ago. Nothing has changed. So but, they cannot ask. But they as, my ask as my father used to say, when the wild the grass growing, the horse starving. Um, how, how could these, art, while we're doing all this stepping out of comfort zone and stuff, how, how the artists eating? Um, how? No, in other words, all right. Because you're stepping out your comfort zone, don't mean that you 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 can't still work in your comfort zone, you know. Okay. Right. So in other words, all right, you have a ready market, right? Um, you're not gonna reinvent the wheel, my friend. All right. So all right. After carnival, you do your thing for carnival, right? And you know you have a run, the thing, and it ends up in Miami as the last event, and then you come home and you start the cycle over again. Somewhere inside there, before even carnival, record, if you're doing an album or an EP, put one or two tracks outside of the box, right? Things that Mario, other DJs, um, Lyndon, people could remix and take to a different space, different level of market, right? Um, you know, you speak to guys and some of the guys feel it in a dire wasted song. It's not a matter of wasted song. In other words, you have to invest in yourself. You have to gamble on yourself, right? That um, try something else, you know, don't just stay in there. All right, sure, you build your house, you get a nice fancy car. If that is what you want, cool, not vex with you, right? But do not complain if something else doesn't happen. It is not going to go to the billboards unless there's a whole collective thing within the industry here. Thank you. Right? We have to, we have to work together, friend. Right? Um, you, you notice um, if a promoter books a Jamaican artist, right? Jamaican artists say, well, if you're booking me, you have to book two, three of my brethren, the younger ones coming up. Right? Why we can't operate like that? You know? With that togetherness, you know what I mean? Um, in the last 50 years, I, I'm not calling any names. There are times when artists will almost, I should say, almost accidentally break new boundaries, you know, new markets, get to perform different parts of the world and keep it a secret for themselves for a couple of years until they peep, somebody find, finds out about it, you know? And when, like, the promoter or producer on the other side asks them, who else in your country can we get? They will tell them, I'm the only one like this, you know? In other words, play selfish and keep the market for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so unless unless we get together, and if everybody doesn't want together, at least they should have some kind of a decent team, forward-thinking team. It can be done. It's not hard. You know, I mean, I have tried. Well, the mistake I have made, I have I have tried to work outside of out of outside of the team because when I realize sometimes you're going down the road and is um, you realize all of a sudden is you alone running this race. You know, um, and then you make investments, you lose a shirt off your back. Um, when you think at least there's there's a movement with you, people will just say, nah, that ain't gonna work, and they leave you hanging, you know, leave you stranded outside there. But not to say I'm gonna give up, mm -hmm. but it will happen 
when we collectively start to work. For instance, producers um, of different generations, right? Um, some of these young producers and artists now don't even know artists, bef artists 10 years before them or producers before them, you know? So how can they learn? In other words, a lot of them feel that the industry started with them and they're just in the industry less than 10 years, right? Um, go back and study from the Calypso, the, the Arrangers, the Frankie Francis, although it mightn't work today, but there are things that you need to go back to your roots, that whole thread of your roots to understand, to make you successful tomorrow, right? Um, so unless we have the creatives, the writers, the technical people, the management, uh, now in a digital world, you have digital spellers, um, we have, well, actually, Mario and the likes of Mario and Lyndon have become even more so important in the industry, where, like I keep telling people now, is no longer just a musician to produce a hit. DJs basically have rocked their space into that, that sphere right now. Um, so it takes a team. It takes a whole team. It takes, But everybody has to be on the same page and be non-selfish. That's the only way it can work. All know? right. Well, cool. You can't be fighting yourself. You can't be, you know, we're in a pandemic, right? I mean, and this is not politics right now. Look at the country. We're not, and you go on the social media now. Is everybody, Trinidad and Tobago has graduated more doctors in the last 18 months than anywhere else on the planet. And scientists, we are, put, we are specialists. And we spend time on social media fighting each other instead of trying to get there. This is the problem or this is the challenge. How can we do this? You know? Okay. Beaver, boy, Team Mario, you have anything else you want to yeah, ask yeah, Beaver before yeah. we go? Yeah, one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's something I look forward to, Beaver. You, Francis, and maybe some of the older guys. Because you all are not only artists, you're musicians too. Mm -hmm. And I know you're talented musicians. Um, I look forward to see you guys probably producing an album one day. If that is possible, getting together some of the guys and doing something and producing something and let's see how it goes. Oh, no, with, 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 I, have, I have shut out nobody in my, in my career. Um, but it, it was where, I mean, their space is, I mean, at the end of the day. Um, like, all right, for instance, who has the most history with me is Robin Imamsha, mm -hmm. right? And Robin and myself, will, will, when I say cross, will, will interact now. And then you mightn't interact for another five years or six years or seven years. It happens. It doesn't happen. You know, um, it's not a matter of forcing it. But it don't have um, to be singing it. It could be jazz. It could be, it could be something. You know, something that 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 you could leave of value for for people to check out later on. Mm -hmm, you know, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. It it could be because a, a nice calypso piece in jazz um, would go down pretty good. You know, it, you know, there's there's room for the market is starved for some of these things. There's there's room for everything right now. Mm -hmm. It's a wide open market, right? No, um, people have asked me like before, why have you stopped producing? I haven't stopped producing. My thing, I stopped releasing mm -hmm. because there was no way to put it. <laughs> you know, at the time, no, the whole digital revolution has changed that game. You know, so now I've started experimenting. You know, poking at things a little bit. And, well, actually, just before the COVID hit, I, the game was about to start. It kind of slowed me down a little bit. But the, the, on the digital realm now, I can do things I could not do at any point in time before in my career. Right? Um, I don't have to depend on a radio station or television station, any, anything or anybody right now. Right? I mean, we have developed our own platform. So I have my own platform. I can do what I want now. I can go out to the world. Right? Um, eventually... I'm going to invite every and anybody in the industry who wants to join me, come join me, right? Um, and it's not a matter of, I'm telling you, it's just you can come and join. This is direction, and we're in a digital world, right? Um, so what you're talking about, like co-productions, and that is the platform I'm talking about. Because a lot of times I've done stuff, and then when you realize a radio station tell you, well, Beaver, we can't play that, you know, that is not the station format. You know, and that is what I was boxing up for years. So when you start to, when you're thinking of going outside the box, stations won't play you. Example, Ganja Farmer. So we had to do it outside and come back in. As a matter of fact, for the first 
what, three or four months when Ganja Farmer hit here, everybody thought Marlon Asher was a Jamaican. And we just kept it a, a quiet secret that was part of the marketing strategy. Right? And they were trying calling Jamaica to book him outside. You know. But um, I must give kudos, though, to um, the out of the box thing. Um, no, I'm not saying that the only ones, but I've been following quietly. Kess the band have been making strides in that direction. In other yeah. words, these are the guys that, even though they're in the carnival and still earning the carnival food, they will go on, on a university tour, you know, or go into some little place in some little part of the world. At the end of the day, uh, they are one group of guys, I mean, and they think about it, and they execute it along those lines. You know, and that is the way we have to start thinking, friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mario, you're good? Yeah, well, I, I really look forward to the album. Um, if it ever could be done. No, you know? don't look. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. It is no longer an album, right? It's a flow of music now. <laughs> yeah. It might come in singles, it might come in EPs, it might come in album. In other words, it's just a... I'm not, I'm not looking for a hit. I'm looking for, for good music. Is that? Exactly. Mm, yeah. All right. But look at this way, a river of good music. Yeah, yes. yeah. Right? That's what we're looking Hits for. Hits would come in there. In that river, if it video. comes, it comes, but but that is not the focus. Nobody can predict a hit, my friend. Anybody mm -hmm. who tell me can predict a hit, the line outside the studio, the, the production office, must be from here to China. <laughs> I remind me of a joke with um, Clive. They say some guy come to Clive Bradley and say, Um, Clive, I had a song for you to produce. Is, is that a hit? Is that a real hit, boy? Clive Clive says, A hit already, and the producer said, Well, don't bring it by me because if it's a hit, you're gonna say, it's, I spoil it. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right. So with that, um, Beaver, it was so good, boy. And your your perspectives and things are so, you know, nail on the head, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So glad to talk to you, right? So, um, yeah, moving forward. Um, All right. Guys, how are we on, going? Hold, right, hold, hold on a second. Let me ask. Three of us here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is your specialty, Robin? Um, sound engineering and, and, and hearing and storytelling. And storytelling. Mario, was your, your specialty? In music, this jockey and this jockey. This jockey? Yeah. Are you into remixing and stuff? Yes. Right. I make a deal here. I will come to to two you all and three of us will do a project and I'll show you in the future what I'm talking about. All right. Great. I am, I am publicly make, making that commitment here now. All right. Well, I have a lot of ideas I could give you yeah. as, exactly. as regards to the type of song that I would want to hear. You know what I mean? And what I would well, look for. Mario is all right, that's the problem. So for instance, put if I put myself now in a young, upcoming, cheeky producer, Mario, who's Mario? Mario could tell me what to do, right? In other words, there's a generational disconnect. And um that's the main thing. But besides that, even within the generation, there's a disconnect, you know, there's a kind of people put themselves in isolation pods that I am the all and end all. And once we stop that. Trust me, the river of good music will come and the hits will come. All right. Well, good. All right. So, Mario, we good, right? Yeah. So, Mr. Beave, uh, it was so you. nice thank speaking you. to you, sir. My brother. All right. Um, have a good night and make some nice music. And I'll hold myself to my commitment with both of you all. All right. Cool, man. Okay. All right. Okay. Be good. Thanks. Yeah, man. All right. So, Mario, boy, we had Beaver. Good show. Right, I think we're gonna do Robin Imam shares coming up soon so we could expand on it a little bit, right? So um okay, so that was moving forward and um we will be coming again soon. So look out for us. <laughs>